<laughs> All right. Hello, my friends. Once again, we come together for a fantastic Revit tip. All right. Today's Revit tip comes from actually a client contacted me yesterday and we worked through this issue together and I learned something that I did not know. And so I'm passing it on to you guys. So even though I know a heck of a lot about Revit, I don't know everything. And I do appreciate some of you when I run up against a little bit of a wall and I'm just showing a video, some guys, some people, some of you guys and girls email me or not email, but put in the comments um, a little bit of a correction. And I totally like that. I'm humble and I can be taught. I can learn new tricks, just like an old dog. All right. But today I'm going to share with you something I learned just yesterday. Rooms do not persist through phases. Okay. Let me just explain what I'm talking about. The project that my uh, client was working on, she was working on a project that had, wait for it, sit down, okay, 13 phases. Blew me away. She had an existing phase, a zero phase, and 11 more. That's 13, if I do my math correctly. And what was happening was <clears throat> the rooms were not showing up in the different phases because we assumed that if you put a room into like the existing phase, that it would still be there. And if you don't set it to be demolished, that it would be there in phase two or phase three or four or five, but that's not the case. So if you already knew this, then Okay, but let me just show, for those that didn't know this, let me show why it's important. So let me just share my screen and we I'll show you why this is important, okay? All right, so let's let me get my face back over here where it's a big old face. Okay, so <clears throat> let me go to the plan. This is the plan of the building. How did I move my face over a little? Okay. This is the plan of our building. And let's let's talk about phases. If I go to existing phase, so this, wait first, this phase that we're in, if you scroll down in your properties, it'll say phases new construction. That's great, love that. And I made a view in my template for existing objects. And it's to show existing phases. And I'm gonna open it up. And there's nothing here. Oh, no. How can I even show this if there's nothing here? You'll see in the properties, if you look down in the properties, the phase is set to existing. So this is in my template so that if, if my job that I'm working on is a renovation project, I would build things here in the existing phase because when you place objects, they go into the phase that the view is set to. So since this is set to existing, any walls I draw, any lines I, not lines, but any objects that I place in here will automatically go into the existing phase. You with me? So if you're in new construction phase, anything you draw goes into that phase. Or if you go to phase 10, of her project, anything she adds becomes part of that phase. And if you were viewing an earlier phase, you won't see those things in the future, okay? So, so that this can be an interesting, so I can actually have something on screen to show you. I'm gonna go back to my plan. I'm gonna collect a few things and I'm gonna push them back to existing, okay? So I'm going to pick my existing walls and I'm going to, over here, I'm gonna say, you are existing, okay? And in this view, I've got it set that anything existing turns gray. So there you go. That's why they showed it. So I'm gonna pick this curtain wall and I'm gonna make it existing and maybe this wall and this wall. I actually want, I'm going to make, 
I'm going to make those existing. Oops, I de that, click that and that wall. Oh, and the door that goes with it. I'm going to make them existing. And maybe you want to be able, existing was probably the stair was probably existing. So you could get upstairs and the railing. I think that's, excuse me, that's probably plenty. Oh, the exterior door, of course, ex exterior door existing. See, so if you, if you did like me and you just started drawing and designing in new construction phase and you're like, oh dear, this stuff is supposed to be in the existing phase and new construction is coming. This is a renovation project. You can just pick the objects and move them, okay? <clears throat> so I'm gonna right click on this window and say, select all instances visible in this view and make them existing, okay? And this one bathroom window, um, I'm just going to make it existing. Okay, that's probably enough, okay, to show you what I'm talking about. Maybe this toilet's existing. Gosh, how can I, um, and the sink and the cabinet is existing. That's it, okay, I'm gonna stop, I promise. What I've done is I've pushed most everything that is a model object into the existing phase. So if I go to existing view, my building is there minus the furniture that was in there, okay? So let's talk. If I go back to the plan, I have rooms here. And what I wanna show you guys, I'm gonna turn the rooms on to make this a better example for you. So I have a template here that is, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm using a view template. I'm gonna click on plan typical. That's the name of my template. I'm gonna to go to model objects and hit edit. And one of the model objects are the rooms that are actually in here. And so if I scroll down to rooms and expand it with a little plus, I'm gonna turn on the interior fill, which is, it shows up as blue so you can see where rooms are, okay? So I'm gonna say, okay. So now you can see that my plan is covered with rooms, right? So that if I were to, um, if I were to, select one of those rooms. This is the room called lobby and I hit delete. It's gone. It's out of my project. It's at, well, it's actually gone onto a, a holding tank. We can talk about that in another um, Revit video. It just goes to a holding tank. Let me, there's not a room here. Okay. Just saying. And if I pick this one that's in the toilet. Okay. Let's just stop before I hit delete. Let's look over at the properties, okay? The properties is grayed out. The phasing property, the phase of new construction is grayed out for this. Just like an object goes into the phase that the view is set to, rooms do the same thing. When you place a room it goes into the phase that the view is set to, and it is locked there. You cannot reach over and switch it to another phase. It gets locked. That being said, it is stuck in that exact phase. It doesn't go, you can't move it, and it doesn't persist. And I'll explain what that means in a second. You can't see it in the next phase. If you have an object in, a, I mean, a room in existing phase, you can't see it in the new. You can't see it in phase two or three or four or all the way up to 13. You cannot see that room. You actually have to copy the room into every single phase that you want to see it. And that's what I learned yesterday. And I was like, what? Why can't you see it? Just like if you put a toilet in and you say will not be demolished ever, you see it in every single phase. But the one thing in Revit that does not operate that way are rooms, okay? They have to be copied to every single phase or you place new ones in the new phase. That way Revit can keep them organized because you can make a schedule that says, this is the list of rooms in phase one. This is the list of rooms in phase two and so on. These are the existing rooms. These are the new rooms. Revit keeps them completely separate and you can't 
just see the ones from the last phase or any phase prior. Okay. That being said, I didn't silence my cell phone and it's ringing right now and I'm turning it off and I will call that client back. Anyway, so let me get rid of some of these rooms. I'm going to hit delete. Boom, delete. And this um, conference room, delete. And this little reception, delete. Okay, stare. There's a lot of stuff going on. So sometimes you have to tab to get the room, delete. And there's one left. You guys can see it. It's right here in the waiting area, okay? So I'm going to hit tab, tab, tab. Gotcha. Gone. I got rid of all the rooms, okay? So let me go to my existing plan. Let's suppose this was a home, a house. So I'm going to go up here. I could type RM, room, from the keyboard. But I wanted to show you how to place rooms if you don't do that. On the architecture tab, you can click on the room button. And if I place one right here, maybe, and I'm going to hit escape and pick the, the what it is, mm -hmm, the title. Uh, let's say that was the dining room. This, this used to be a house when it was first um, in existence. And this is the bathroom. Okay, so I'm going to type RM from the keyboard and drop one there. I can drop one here also. Okay, so let's let's just edit this a little bit. This was dining. No, wait, not dining. When you come into here, this was living room. Okay, living room. And may, this was toilet because you can see it. Um, toilet. Sometimes they call it bathroom when it's in a house. Okay, look, bathroom, dining. Let's call it dining room. Why not? Dining room. Okay, this was an existing house. And if I highlight the room, let's look in the properties. Sure enough, it's locked. It's grayed out as existing. So when I go to my new plan, bam, those don't show through. You cannot see them. But oftentimes, oftentimes you want to see the exact same things. Let's say there's 200 rooms, but you, you want them. Most of those 200 rooms are going to be exactly the same with the same room number, the same everything in the next phase, except for just a few. So you're like, oh my gosh, how do I even do this? Well, let me show you. If what we're going to do is we're going to copy all the rooms into this new phase, but then we're going to change one or two. Okay. So that that's, a, that's a normal workflow. When you're working on a renovation project, you blow out a wall, expand some things and change some things. That's totally normal, but you want to keep 90% or more of the rooms intact. Okay. If that makes sense to you, you you're following with me track. You're, okay. Track with me here. Mm, okay. Back to the existing plan. Here's what you would do. You can back out a little bit and you can do a big bounding box around your existing plan. And you come up to the filter and it lists everything it found, okay? I quickly, first thing I do is hit check none, okay? So none is checked over here. And then I come down and I click rooms and it's going to pick all the rooms that are in my selection set. And I'll just, it's getting three which actually that's what I want. So I've got the three rooms picked, but actually this is not gonna be as dramatic if you can't see the room numbers. So I'm gonna hit escape for a second. Let me change, um, let me change these um, room tags to have a number in them, okay? Okay, in fact, I'm going to change them so that, so I'm, look at this, E100, okay? So that there's no way that the program can automatically do this. Look at this, E102, but that E is for existing. And wait for it, I'm gonna put, do this one also. E, where's the E? E103, okay, you guys with me? I've got E100, E102, E103. All right, now back to selecting all, filtering, check none, only pick rooms. Okay, so now I've got the rooms selected. So wait for it. Co I'm going to go copy to the clipboard. 
I'm going to go to my other plan that has no rooms in it at all. You'd be able to see them right here if there were rooms. And I'm going to, on the drop down under paste, I'm going to say paste in the same place. Bam. And it pastes those same rooms in here. Okay. So wait for it. The reason I pasted them in here in the new plan is because they weren't persisting through. And I would need to paste this in every single phase. Or I could wait and grab all the ones from this phase and copy them to the next phase and then copy those to the next phase when changes happen. Okay, this is how you do it. So let's tag these things. T, G on the keyboard, tag. And um, wait, R, T for room tags. And I want to tag them with the number. Are you, watch this, wait for it. What's that? Oh, look, dining room E100 came through. And 102 and 103. Okay. So basically, every attribute that you had assigned, like the if you have the floor type assigned, the wall type assigned, the room name, the room number, the department it's part of, anything that's important that you have put into that room as a parameter, that copies over also. So you don't have to go back and redo all that stuff, okay? Just wanted to show you. So I think that you understand the reason for this video is that rooms, if you need rooms to go from phase to phase to phase, you have to copy them, go to a view that is set to the correct phase and then paste them. And you could delete, let's say this bathroom is not really a bathroom anymore. You could, um, let's, um, let's pick that toilet and say, actually, you're going to be demolished when you get to new construction. So it goes away. And these um, objects are going to be demolished in the new construction. They're still in the existing phase, but in the new, they're not. Because in the new, this is storage. Bam. And it, there's no conflict between the existing toilet room, the bathroom, and the storage because they're completely in separate phases. All right. I think that's all we needed to uh, do. I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. I hope that helps you guys working on renovation projects or with projects that have many or multiple phases. Rooms don't persist. You have to copy them from one phase to the next renumber them, rename them if you have to, but you can't see the, the previous phase in your views. All right. With that, I will say adieu. Have a fantastic day. And until we meet again, happy, happy riveting. All right. Bye-bye.